It's a great pleasure to welcome you this morning to a very important and historic conference. I'm Grant Underwood, the program chair for this conference. And I would like to extend a greeting, although I'm not an Arabic speaker, one of my friends offered me a phrase that would be appropriate. And if I don't butcher it, here it is, Achlin Wasachlin, which uh, for folks like me is a truly beautiful greeting that means far more than welcome. The way is paved before you. It's beautiful. You're welcome, and we're all one family. Something to that effect. So we welcome you today. This is a conference that has been uh, several years in the making. And we are especially pleased to welcome our guest speakers. We have 14 of them, uh, two of them who are with us uh, virtually, and the other 12 are here on the front row. And you will be uh, introduced to them uh, as each session takes place. You have in your program booklet a bio as well as a picture and you can begin to become familiar with them. We'd like to thank Brigham Young University for sponsoring this conference. This is an event that is sponsored by the university. It's a university level event, not simply something put on by a particular department or even college. It's been sponsored at the highest levels. We're grateful for their funding. We're grateful also for the program committee members who have labored over the last several years to put this conference together. You will see them. They have a particular color badge on. In fact, if you uh, look carefully, you'll notice that the speakers have a particular color name tag. The uh, committee has its own distinctive color. So look for them and acknowledge their labors to bring this about. We'd also like to thank uh, the Hinckley Center for making this beautiful hall available and for the guest relations a team that is always behind the scenes making this a most hospitable and pleasant experience. And we'd like to thank those who have put together this beautiful set and our film crew who have been laboring to bring us a really lovely environment in which to learn today. And that, friends, is our particular purpose. Now, we're going to have this morning a, uh, a couple of special opportunities. We're going to change the order in the program and have our um, university welcome by academic associate academic vice president Brad Niger. And that will be followed by a Quranic recitation from Tulat al Shukairat, who is the uh, imam here in Utah County and also a pulmonologist at Utah, the, the Valley Hospital here. Following that, I'll give a few more introductory remarks, and that will be our opening uh, session. So at this time, we'll invite Vice President uh, Niger to come forward. Good morning. On behalf of uh, President Kevin J. Worthen and uh, Brigham Young University, we extend a very warm welcome to uh, each of you. It is an honor for BYU to host this conference, The Islamic World Today, Issues and Perspectives. We extend a special welcome to our Muslim friends, visiting dignitaries, and our presenters. We hope you feel comfortable at BYU and feel of our respect and admiration. If there's anything we can do uh, in the next few days and beyond 
to help you feel at home, would you please let us know? Look for the badges, as uh, Grant was, uh, was discussing. We wanna make sure your stay here is just the way it should be. We encourage you to take a walk or two uh, through campus between rain showers. We think uh, they're coming maybe this afternoon. Um, it's been said that uh, if you don't like the weather in Utah, just wait 15 minutes. And so there will be, there will be opportunities. Um, take advantage of this uh, beautiful uh, mountain scenery. We do express appreciation to our program chair, Dr. Grant Underwood, um, his committee, and all those who've worked tirelessly uh, to organize this conference. And um, Grant, I don't think it's hyperbolic to say this is a, this is a historic conference. Certainly at BYU, we have, we have hosted uh, symposia, uh, lectures, and meetings on Islam, but this is a university-wide uh, streamed conference open to the public with, uh, with truly um, a, a stunning assemblage of presenters. And so accordingly, I'd like to thank and acknowledge our presenters who will share their considerable knowledge and extensive um, experience. Uh, as one who used to be uh, in an academic track, I understand and appreciate how minutes turn into hours and hours into days and days into weeks and years of meticulous, heavy lifting work to be able to come and present the, the way you will present to us. So for that, we are so grateful. We're also grateful for the attendees who bring their own expertise and or interest in this important uh, subject matter. We hope the presenters and attendees come together in a symbiotic way to create a learning environment that is um, accessible and inspiring and, and personal. And then with newfound insight, we elevate our capacity to pass along accurate information, um, enlightenment. It was John Locke who said, the improvement of understanding is for two ends. First, our own increase of knowledge. Secondly, to enable us to deliver that knowledge to others. In this way, our meeting can be far reaching. One of the reasons BYU feels honored to host this conference is our value in interfaith collaboration. Conferences like this expand dialogue and understanding and deepen unity and respect. I like Krista Stendhal's um, criteria for understanding, for religious understanding, and one in particular when he said we should communicate in a way that leaves uh, room for what he called holy envy. Things that we admire in other faith traditions that maybe we'd like to see a little more of um, in our own uh, faith traditions. And so it is with that backdrop as a, as a university we view this conference as an opportunity to deepen um, our understanding and appreciation of Islam, uh, one of the world's major and most influential religions. BYU shares the opinion of our friend and colleague, Dr. Underwood, Dr. Underwood who wrote, it is more important than ever that we understand our Muslim neighbors and their faith and better appreciate why this is relevant even essential for informed citizen, citizenship today. Again, welcome to BYU. May you be inspired by this instructive and collaborative conference. May you make new friends and may we build upon our mutual respect to go out and make a positive difference in our little corners of the world. Have a great week. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning, everyone. I hope everybody is excited for this conference. And um, it's really an honor and pleasure for me to actually have, you know, give the opening prayer for the, for the conference. Um, thank you for having us here um, as part of the local Muslim community here. We're so excited. We've always had a great relationship with BYU. And, you know, it's amazing the similarities between the Muslim tradition and the, and, the, and the LDS tradition. Um, 
I often say the translation after I recite the verses that I want to actually open the prayer with. This time I thought maybe I should do it differently. I'm going to actually translate and then when I'm reciting, you'll try to kind of see, oh, this is what he said in English. How did that sound actually in Arabic? And I, there's quite a few translations in Quran. I chose a simple, I would say a modern language-based translation that will give you some of the, you know, give you an insight of how the deep, the, you know, the, the verses' meanings can go to. Um, these verses are from a surah called Al-Hashr, which is the gathering. That's the translation of that. And um, as you know, the Quran flows with the Lord addressing mankind. So, <clears throat> you who believe, be mindful of God and let every soul consider carefully what it sends ahead for tomorrow. Be mindful of God, for God is well aware of everything you do. Do not be like those who forget God so God causes them to forget their own souls. They are the rebellious ones. There is no comparison between the inhabitants of the fire and the inhabitants of paradise. The inhabitants of paradise are the successful ones. If we had sent this Quran down to a mountain, you, prophet, would have, sent, would have seen it humbled and split apart in its awe of God. We offer people such illustrations so that they may reflect, he is God. There is no God other than him. It is he who knows what is hidden, as well as what is in the open. He is the Lord of mercy, the giver of mercy. He is God. There is no God other than him, the controller, the holy one, source of peace, grantor of security, guardian over all, the almighty, the compeller, the truly great. God is far above anything they consider to be his partner. He is God, the creator, the originator, the shaper. The best names belong to him. Everything in the heavens and earth glorifies him. He is the almighty, the wise. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. يا أيها الناس اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون ولا تكونوا كالذين نسوا الله فأنساهم أنفسهم أولئك هم الفاسقون لا يستوي أصحاب النار وأصحاب الجنة أصحاب الجنة هم الفائزون لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله وتلك الأمثال نضربها للناس لعلهم يتفكرون هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو عالم الغيب والشهادة هو الرحمن الرحيم هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عما يشركون هو الله الخالق البارئ المصور له الأسماء الحسنى يسبح له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم صدق الله Thank you. What a beautiful recitation. Thank you, Talat. We just want to 
share with you now a, a little orientation to how the day will go. Uh, each of our sessions is simply organized and will be engagingly presented. Uh, we will have two speakers in each session, each speaking for approximately 30 minutes. Following that, there'll be a discussion period. And for our students, we're very excited about this because it demonstrates how conversation uh, takes place at a very high level within the academic world where comments can be made, questions raised, uh, even differing opinions exchanged with civility and enlightenment. And so you will see that. The chairs you see seated to my left will be where that discussion period takes place in the final half hour. Know that if you are in the audience and while listening to one of our speakers, here's something you'd like to uh, probe further or ask a question, you may text the moderator. If you look on the back of your program, there is a messaging uh, instruction there for you. And the moderator may uh, feather in some of your uh, questions toward the end uh, of the discussion period. That's how we'll proceed at um, 11 o'clock after our first session, there will be a break. And all of you will be invited to participate in that break. Uh, here to my right in the aisle, there will be some uh, very light refreshments and most importantly, a chance to mingle. And students, our uh, guests are as anxious to meet you as you are to meet them. So don't hesitate, come up, introduce yourselves. If you're a, an Arab language speaker, practice a little of your Arabic and demonstrate what a great Arabic language program we have here at BYU. Now, to kind of get us in the mood, I want to finish this section and opening by uh, sharing something. Uh, in preparation for this conference, we commissioned a small little documentary through our Center for Teaching and Learning here uh, to kind of film the new mosque from the Utah Islamic Center, if you're from Utah or live in this area, at 90th South, a little west of the I-15, there's a beautiful new mosque that pertains to the Utah Islamic Center. And we've filmed some of that along with some brief introductions to aspects of Islam. And we're just going to show you a couple of little clips this morning, one that's a kind of overview statement that should catch your attention. And then, because we're moving later to a session on women and gender in Islam, there'll be a tiny little clip pertaining to that. And it will be followed by a, another very brief uh, segment that mentions the Quran, which is the subject of our after lunch session this afternoon. Just to kind of whet our appetites, and if those little one or two minute clips interest you, you know you've landed at the right event because you're going to have an hour and a half focus on each of those topics here very shortly. So I think at this time, let's proceed uh, to show those uh, clips. Islam means to submit, submit to the will of God. So we believe that Islam did not start with Prophet Muhammad. It started from Adam. Simply obeying God, obeying the Prophet of the time was Islam. So if you lived during the time of Moses and you were from the Israelites and you believed in God and you followed Moses, you were a Muslim. Similarly, if you lived during the era of Jesus and you believed in God and followed the teachings of Jesus Christ, you were a Muslim, you were a follower of Islam. 
I decided to wear the headscarf halfway through eighth grade and um, no one else in my family did it and I wasn't pressured at all to do it. I kind of just decided on a whim that this is something that I wanted to incorporate into my identity. And um, I think that I actually find it empowering. I've noticed since I started wearing the scarf, people started treating me, especially men, uh, treated me less like a girl and more like an individual who has thoughts to contribute. It constantly reminds me that I am an ambassador for Islam. So it forces me to be better, but it also helps other people interact with someone different from them. Um, I think it's definitely something when you're walking in the hallway and people are keep unquestioning you. Do you sleep with it? Do you, do you shower with it? But at the end of the day, I think um, I try to be an example of a free Muslim woman because people always think my parents made me wear it or I'm oppressed or whenever I go visit my family, I'm getting an arranged marriage. But I think at the end, it's I try to educate people and be an example of what a Muslim should be. It's someone's choice because it's man, just like anything else, it's mandatory in the religion, but at the end, of it, we get that free will to choose it, whether we want it or not. And I, I think I treat it as a crown, and I say to myself, I get to style it every day, I get to choose the color, and my, my friends and I even joke about it being a different hair color every day. Quran is the word of God, the speech of God, and this is as close as you can get to God. Uh, so we believe this is the exact verbatim, word to word, of God's speech. The Quran was revealed over a period of 23 years. Uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the conduit uh, from which the Quran came from God to humanity uh, through Angel Gabriel. 